Hi, welcome to my November reading wrap up. I know I'm a little bit late getting this up, but better late than never. Uh, this month I read eight books, including one ebook, two audio books, and the other ones were actual physical books. I'm going to rate the, show you these in my lowest rating first to my highest. And so my first one is this one <coughs> Trees for the Absentees by Halem Brasserat. This one is um, originally um, written in Arabic uh, and it's been translated by Sue Copeland into English and it's about a little Palestinian, a teenage Palestinian girl and it's just a bit, little bit about her life, it's like a young adult fiction, it's only no novella, it's only like less than 100 pages long, 86, 87 pages. And it's just like this little girl, this girl called Philistia. Phyllis, I can't pronounce the name proper. Philistia. And she works washing women at these, these little things. And then it's just a bit about her life and how she wants to change things and how she wants to go to university and do better. It was, it was a little, it was a nice quick read, but it was just too short to go into any depth about anything. So I only gave this um, two and two stars out of five, but I do really love the cover. I think that's the best thing about the book is the cover. If this was a bit longer, it probably would have been more interesting. So I get the two out of five stars. The next one is "The Star in the Forest" by Ellen Kellogg. Uh, this is about two little sisters who are staying at their grandma's house when um, one's looking through the window and sees something land. And they go into the woods to go and find out what it is. And it turns out they find a rock, or what they think is a rock. But then the rock turns out, there's the rock. The rock turns out to be a little fallen star. I like the pictures, I think the pictures are good, but the story was okay. Uh, it's not something for my younger, if my kids were younger, they wouldn't want to read this over and over again. And it'll be a now and again book. So I gave this one at three out of five stars. Then after that we had Be a Narwhal by Sarah Ford. These are, you can get a little collection of these like Be a Mermaid, Be her Llama, things like that. And these are just about little personality trait things like, told you a bit about there what the personality is like. It's got these little cute pictures like Narwhal was determined to stop negative thought cycles and then those cute little pictures. Uh, I think out of the ones I've read I most like the Narwhal. These are like cute ones like, no one thought there was so much to see and there he is looking out the window where everybody else is just not bothering. And there's some cute, it's a little, little no one always had time for friends. It was just like a little cute little novelty book, which I think is good as a little present and I gave this one three out of five stars. Next one <coughs> I had was an audio book, which was um, Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. Now, it's my first book I've well, read or listened to by Paula Hawkins. I have Girl on the Train on my to wish list, but I haven't got this. And I saw this on and I thought, oh yeah, I'll give it a listen to. And it got, it got quite good ratings for it, so I thought, mm, yeah. But I wasn't that into it. The first half, it was just really hard to get into because it's like so many different characters you're listening to. It tells you from different points of view about... I don't know, eight, nine, ten characters or something like that. And it's about this woman who um, we found at the Deadpool who was drowned. <coughs> but she was also writing stories uh, about the history of the Deadpool. And we don't think her suicide was actually a suicide. It was maybe more to that. And it's a bit like that, but then it goes to like goes to different people's point of views. And for the first half of the book, I was just totally a bit confused. Uh, the second half of the book, it got better, but it was, because it was only like towards the end, do you know what I mean? It was, I only gave it three out of five stars, which is a bit of a disappointment really, but I'm hoping that Girl on the Train is a lot better because that is still on my to read list. So yeah, three out of five stars for that one. Then after that, I, list, I read on ebook um, Girl, Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. I think I'm saying that name right. She was one who won the joint prize with um, Margaret Orwood, obviously. Um, the writing style was very strange. It's like 
there was no full stops. There was like one like load of writing, no full stops, no um, speech marks or anything. And it tells like 12, I think it was 12 different women that nearly all of them are either black, British or a lesbian or like that. And <coughs> it gives you like a little perspective into each of their lives and all their lives are somehow slightly connected to one another. Um, I did quite enjoy it. Um, it took a while to get used to the writing style, obviously with no full stops and things like that. So the first few two chapters I was a bit like that, but then after I got I got really into it and I think I think my favourite chapters was from Dominique and there was a last one. Who was the last one? I can't remember her name now. The last one I will tell you, I'll read I'll leave I'll leave my link to my reviews down below so everything will be in my blog reviews down below as well. But yeah, and I've done, I'm not sure what to give this book. I don't, it's either a 3.5 or a 4. I'm still in between, still deciding which one to give this book. But I did really like the ending. A lot of people said the ending wasn't that. But I did like how it tied it all together and I did like the ending. So yeah, 3.5, 4, I'm still deciding. And after that, <coughs> I'm going to add Pivotal. This is by Nikki Valance. This is about four sisters, or no, four women and not sisters. Because I got confused whether they were sisters, whether they were related or what. But, uh, but there were four women and they each received a letter saying that they could have going to get an inheritance. <coughs> but to get their inheritance, they had to start a tango school. They had to start a tango school and they, wasn't, they didn't know who else was going to be the beneficiaries to join this tango school. Um, who's going to be doing working with them, basically. They had to accept it or not accept it. And I, I found it quite interesting, but then I found it a bit weird at first because each of these four women all went to see a hypnotherapist, the same hypnotherapist, to find out whether they should go ahead with this deal or not, or, you know. But then it does come clearer at the end why that was so strange, but I can't really go into it at the moment because it's, it's, oh, it's, it's really like, I can't, I can't really say much without giving much away. But the first, it was a bit slow at first. Um, I did actually enjoy this and I give this uh, 4 out of 5 stars. Next I read <coughs> Death Room by Harry Dunn. This is a little, he's a Jack Barkley, he's a detective. And <coughs> a woman comes to him because her sister has just been killed by a man falling onto her car and basically killing her because she fell from... A uh, big building, but her so a death was no accident. It was um, murder. And uh, basically, they go to find out to find out who, well, you know, how her sister died, everything. And it turns out she's into a drug dealing. She was dealing dealing drugs and things like this, and big, like these gangster people. And um, I did really enjoy it. It was a really quick book. It only had 170 pages in, so it was a quick read, which I really I did really enjoy them. The only thing I didn't enjoy is that the detective, Jack, and his and the client, Eva, they sort of like had a relationship together like, and it literally started straight away and obviously she's there trying to investigate why her sister's been murdered and the next thing she's hooking up with the detective. <laughs> but I really love the ending of it, the ending of this was the best bit, I really love the ending and it really tied everything up nicely. So I give this one 4 out of 5 stars. And the last one I read was also an audio book, and it was a single thread by Tracy Chevalier. I hope I'm saying that right name. Um, I did give this book four out of five stars. No, four and a half out of five stars, but I'm thinking whether to give it a five stars. It's a well, not, it's not very fast paced, it's a historical fiction. It's about Violet Speedwell, and she, she's about 38. Her husband's died um, in the war. She is joining this broaderist club to learn how to embroider things for this um, the church and it's a bit yeah I just really loved it it was a really like a really cozy read I just really loved it and I just kept listening to it when I was on my school run walking to backwards and forwards to school and I just it just really warmed me up and I just really liked it I'm thinking about upping it to a five stars and this is the first book I've ever read by Tracy, so I am really can't wait to read some more of her actually. So yeah, four out of five stars, four and a half 
out of five stars, maybe, maybe a five. We'll see. So that's all my books for today. I will leave links below to where you can buy them. And also, once I've done a full blog review, you can see the full blog review because obviously I'm better at writing than I am talking to you because I'm all gibberish. But yes, I'll leave all the links below. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.